Nicholas Bugash, inventor of the GeoFluve method used in the natural regrade software module. Today, we're going to explore how natural regrade and the GeoFluve method are spreading around the world, common problems with traditional reclamation designs that are solved by using the patented GeoFluve method with natural regrade, natural regrade updates to make your design work easier and better, and look at examples of the results natural regrade users are getting. Let's begin by taking a look at where natural regrade has been licensed around the world since its release in 2005. The diamonds on this map can represent several users concentrated in an area. Natural regrade first caught people's notice in the southwestern USA, and its use has spread across the United States and North America into Australia, Europe, Africa, Asia, and Central and South America. The only continent without licenses is Antarctica. The GeoFluve method is based on fluvial geomorphic principles and requires skilled support staff for natural regrade users. Rod Eccles is an expert at survey, machine guidance, and has a 15-year association with natural regrade and GeoFluve. Rod's firm, Landforma, provides natural regrade support in Australia and its environs. Jose Martin Duque both teaches the GeoFluve method using natural regrade at the Universidad Complutense de Madrid in Spain and operates the company Restauración Geomorphologica to provide natural regrade technical support in Europe and Central and South America. Let's look at common reclamation problems solved by the GeoFluve method. Traditional gradient terrace and down drain reclamation does not have the drainage density that nature develops to make a hydrologic balance. The gullies that develop are natural erosion processes establishing the needed drainage density. This results in expensive maintenance and sediment loss. Here we have a mine reclamation that tried to make natural landforms without using the geofluve method and is having consistent erosion problems. They tried hauling in rocks to control the erosion, but did not address the cause of their problems. Because all the reclamation design channel longitudinal profiles were not graded to the local base level, all the reclamation is incising, eroding downward to get on a natural longitudinal profile to the local base level. In this example, spoil was placed against the high wall, but at a constant gradient slope without any channels to collect and convey the runoff waters. The result is rill and gully erosion across the slope face. Note that in this geofluve design, runoff waters no longer flow erosively for long distances over constant gradient slopes, but instead are conveyed by swales on complex slopes to channels sized for their flow at every point, just like a stable natural landform. Zooming in to part of the 3D design view, we can see the detail of the complex slope profiles, subwatershed ridges and swales, and on the valley bottom channels, the steeper cut bank on the outside of the bend and the flatter point bar on the inside of the bend. Also note that the channel flow crosses from bank to bank, just as a natural channel does. This image is a constructed and vegetated geofluve waste dump that has these functional natural landform elements. All the land without trees is geofluve reclamation that has sediment yield less than background. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. We have a very powerful update for editing subwatershed ridges and swales. This view is looking down a natural tributary in the western United States to its receiving channel. The slope profile from the main ridge behind the viewer to the end of the orange arrow is convex. From the point of the arrow to the receiving channel in the distance, this tributary's channel profile is concave. The distance from the main ridge to where the channel begins, its head, is the ridge to head of channel distance. The valley walls on either side of the stream have smaller depressions that collect runoff water and convey it to the stream channel. These depressions are like miniature subwatersheds, but they do not have defined channels in them, and we call them swales. The yellow lines are drawn on top of subwatershed ridges, and the blue lines are drawn on the swale bottoms. 
The blue and yellow lines are drawn along the convex portion of the subwatershed ridges and swale bottoms. Note that the blue swale bottom lines are shorter than the yellow subwatershed ridge lines. This results in concave swale bottoms forming beyond the blue arrowheads. This view, looking across the convex ridge to head of channel distance to a steep channel in Australia, shows the same subwatershed ridge and swale elements, but the relative length of the yellow and blue lines is different here in response to the local earth materials, vegetation, and climate. This view shows the subwatershed ridge and swale on the valley walls of a steep channel type in Colombia, South America. The channel flow is forced around the ridges, forming the characteristic steep channel zigzag pattern. Notice that these same landforms develop all around the world, but their dimensions vary in response to local earth materials, climate, and vegetation. The variations are inputs to the GFU design and natural regrade. This is a plan view of a 3D GFU design made using natural regrade. As in a natural landform, these swales function to break the valley wall into smaller catchments that collect water and convey it without valley wall erosion to a stream channel size to handle the increasing volume of water in the downstream direction. Here's a 3D perspective view down a subwatershed of a natural regrade design. It is similar to a natural landform because it is based on fluvial geomorphic inputs measured from a local project area. The update simplifies subwatershed ridge and swale editing. The subwatershed ridge and swale editing update allows the user to specify the convex length of these features globally that is across the entire design, or by subwatershed ridge within the design, or individually to any subwatershed ridge or swale in the design. This update makes it easier for the user to achieve the desired hydrologic function and also to affect earth material balance to make the most cost effective and easy to construct design. Natural regrades channel head elevation warnings advise the user when elevation changes are needed to make a functional design. The user can now set a tolerance range so that the warnings do not appear for very small elevation changes that the user is not concerned about. Natural regrade channel head slope warnings advise the user when channel head slope changes are needed to make a functional design. The user can now set a tolerance range so that these warnings do not appear for very small head slope changes that the user is not concerned about. We've moved the reread valley bottoms button to below the preview button to help smooth workflow when making iterative edits. The new check ridgeline slope command searches for drainage problems that can result from conflicts between the user specified valley orientation and the surrounding topographic elevations. It can draw a symbol on the design at the identified problem location, and it can make a report that helps you to understand the changes needed to fix the problem. The updated edit longitudinal profile command helps the user design irregular ridgeline profiles, like adding saddles as shown here. Its function has been improved, and it has the option to show the original profile to help you visualize the effect of your editing. The updated auto longitudinal profile command helps the user design ridgeline profiles with a continuous smooth curve, as shown here, that could be appropriate for a subwatershed ridge or swale. Its function has been improved, and note that you can see the name of the specific subwatershed ridge or swale line that you're editing, and it has the option to show the original profile to help you visualize the effect of your editing. The cut fill centroid command report shows material volumes, movement optimization and distance, and elevations. So you can determine if the movement is up or downhill and has been updated with cost calculations to help you identify the most cost effective design option. These updates help the user make a GFU design for a stable landform that functions like a natural landform, meets their cut fill balance target, 
and has the most efficient material movement option to construct. This is our optimal project solution. Next, let's look at some results users are getting from GFU designs that they made using natural regrade. The low cost repair of failed traditional slope reclamation at Nuria, Spain is an interesting case. Excavating and replacing the failed traditional gradient terrace reclamation would have been very expensive, but a GFU design could be made using natural regrade to make a stable landform without moving the failed material. This landform has proven to be cost effective and has passed the runoff from many storms without problems. Geofluf cooperated with BHP Bilton on a sediment study to verify reclamation performance. The study measured sediment yield from three match sites, native subwatershed, geofluf design with top dressing and moderate vegetation, and geofluf design with well-established vegetation. The subwatersheds were matched by area, overall slope, aspect, and channel slope profiles. And then temporary sediment dams were constructed across the subwatershed mouths to capture all water and sediment runoff, the sediment yield from a bank full event. The study results showed that the sediment yield from the geofluv design with top dressing and moderate vegetation was comparable to the undisturbed native site. And the geofluv design with well-established vegetation produced significantly less sediment yield than the native site. The study sediment yield values are presented in this table for the three sites as tons per acre per year and the percentage less than native. The native undisturbed site produced the greatest sediment yield at 4.25 tons per acre per year. The GFLU reclamation site with moderate vegetation yielded 13% less sediment than the native site. And the GFLU reclamation that was well vegetated yielded only 2.52 tons per acre per year, 41% less than the native site. This is a constructed geofu design made using natural regrade. You can see how the complex landform provides variation in sunlight and water harvesting and how that supports natural vegetation diversity. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to show how natural regrade and the geofu method are spreading around the world, how common problems with traditional reclamation designs are solved by using nat <clears throat> natural regrade with GFU design method, how we've been updating natural regrade to make your design work easier and better, and to show you some examples of the results natural regrade users are getting. Our slogan is, there is something new happening in landform design. It's the future, it's natural, and we're asking you to be a part of it. In closing, I want to acknowledge our team of GFU associates that are working together to bring the future of natural landform design to you. Please write these contact links down. As mentioned earlier, natural regrade requires specialized support like the Carlson Mining and Geology modules do. And natural regrade is not handled by regular Carlson software survey and office product resellers. Please contact these people directly with questions about natural regrade and to order natural regrade and schedule training.